your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3, verse number 12. I've got a message I want to minister today to you guys that kind of piggybacks what is going on with our missions, uh, trips that we're going to be taking in 2019 and 2020. We believe in this church, we believe that we can reach the world from Seminole, Texas. Can I get a better amen there? We believe here in Seminole, in this church, that we can reach the world from Seminole, Texas. Right outside of those doors is a whole other world that we're going to reach. Amen. Can I get a better amen than that? You might be sitting in your chair right now and say, well, I just don't have a desire to do that. I don't have... Well, you know what? Pray, number one, that God would give you a desire, and two, help support it, financially help it and all that. And I believe that God will fulfill those desires. He'll give you the desires of your heart. And I want to ask this question. How many here in our church has gone on a crusade or a missions trip with our church? Just raise your hand real high. Look at those that have gone already. Can you honestly say it's been amazing? Those trips are like truly amazing. We're in 2019, we're going to the Dominican Republic again. It's going to be a phenomenal time. 2020, we're going into Israel and, um, and Cairo and Egypt and all through there. An amazing time there. We're going to be planning some other trips. And if you guys know, that's why Miss Gabby is here. She is our missions director. And um, she has been a missionary, lived as a missionary, still is a missionary. Her mom and dad are overseas now traveling all over Europe, ministering the gospel of Jesus. So it's in her blood to be missions-minded. Can I get an amen? And when you take that kind of passion that she has for missions, and it involves our church, man, we will reach the world for Jesus Christ. Now, I know some of you guys might be sitting here today thinking, well, what are we doing in Seminole? That's why you get those gift cards. That's why you put them in the offering bucket, so we can reach the people here in Seminole and the surrounding areas. Can I get an amen? So we're not only reaching our home, but we're reaching outside of these four walls in our communities, and we're going to see Jesus ministered to all those that need to hear his name. Amen. So lift up those offering envelopes. That was my offering message for you today. Let's pray over those. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that you're good and your mercy endures forever. We thank you, God, right now that you're blessing those that are giving of their tithes and offerings. Father, press down, shaking together, running over, shall people give unto our bosom. And so we thank you, Father, right now for being a blessing to us so we can be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. You be blessed as you give today. As our offering buckets are being passed, you're there in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 12. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, do it better. Find some else around and say, neighbor, do it better. We started a series last Sunday entitled, Do It Better. Today we're going to talk about driven to do God's will. How many want to do God's will? Amen. I want to be pleasing to my Father. I want to do what His will is. In Philippians chapter 3, verse number 12, the Bible says this, not that I've already attained or am already perfected. How many know that nobody here is perfect? Amen. Goes on. But I press on. How many know even though we're not perfect, we still press on? Bible goes on here. Paul, in fact, he goes on and says, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press. Somebody say, I press. I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this in mind. And if anything, you you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Now we know, we looked at this scripture last Sunday, two times Paul encourages the church at Philippi to press on or press towards. It's important for us as believers not to be satisfied with the status quo. It's important for us as believers not to get used to being ordinary. God called us to be extraordinary. Amen. Now, this word press, it means to pursue. It means to run swiftly to reach a goal. It means actually to drive away. Can you believe that 2018 is almost over? It's amazing how fast time is going, and we know that. But in all actuality, we can't change up to this point anything that's happened in 2018. It's done. It's over. We can't go back in time and change what's happened in 2018. But there's one thing we can do. We can press towards. We can press on. We can keep moving forward. We can't change what happened in 2018. But there's one thing we can do. We can keep moving forward. 
High five somebody say, I'm going to keep moving forward. I want to high five somebody say, I'm going to do it better. Now notice what Paul goes on and says this in verse number 15. He says this, therefore, let us. Now whenever I hear the word therefore, I want to ask myself, what's it there for? Well, therefore, goes on and says, let us, as many as are mature. I've said this many times, and I believe it's true even still today. Maturity is measured by how driven a person is. Maturity is measured by how driven a person is. Basically, what Paul was saying here is that I press towards the goal. I press towards the prize of the upper call. I'm moving forward. I'm reaching the goal. I'm driving away from the past. I'm moving forward to the future. And then he says this in verse 15, Therefore, let us, as our mature, have this in mind. He's basically saying this, Leave the past behind and grow up. Look at your neighbor say, Neighbor, I think you need to grow up. That's basically what he's saying here. He's saying, the past is gone. I'm going to drive away. I'm going to press on. I'm going to leave the past behind, and I'm going to move forward. Thank God that we got through 2018. Thank God we've learned some things in 2018. Sure, we've made mistakes. Sure, we've had to overcome some obstacles. But guess what? We're better for it. I said we're better for it, and we're going to keep pressing on. Now, I want to ask you this question today. What drives you? What drives you? I can think of a lot of things in my life. My wife's chicken enchiladas drive me. I love her. Even though she's, she's white, she can make some really good chicken enchiladas. And, and there's, a, there's some things in the natural world that drive But I wanted to take it deeper. What drives you spiritually? Turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse number 17. What drives you spiritually? Some people are, are, are drawn towards worship. Others are drawn to teaching. Others are drawn to prophecy. What drives you? Well, there's something that's even deeper than worship and prophecy and teaching and preaching of the Word and praying and all that. There's something that's even deeper than that that God is calling us to do. We've got to be driven to do His will. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 17. And this is the deeper part right here. And whatever you do in word or deed, or I can say it like this, whatever you do in prayer, whatever you do in prophecy, whatever you do in worship, whatever you do if you walk with God, do it all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. I like this scripture because even Paul, when he was writing this to the church at Colossae, he was basically saying this, you can pray a good prayer, you can prophesy, you can do all these kind of things, but if it's not done in the name of the Lord, it was a waste of time. We must, as believers, get better at doing things in the name of the Lord. We should do things not because it's the right thing to do. We should do things not because it's a good thing to do. We should do it because it's all to be done in the name of the Lord. I want to do better because I'm doing it to please Him. Come on, somebody. I want to do it better because I want to be pleasing to Him. Now, I said this last Sunday, and I want to say it again. There is nothing we can do to change God's love for us. God's love is infinite. He can't, his love is not going to change. His love is infinite. I can't work harder to make God love me more. I can't do enough things to make God love me more. I can't mess up enough to make God lo love me less. He still loves me. So that's not the question anymore. What is it that, want, that God wants from us to keep us moving forward? We must live a life that's pleasing to Him. Thank God for His love. I love God. We love God. God's love is not going to change for us. But one thing that we must do, we must be driven to do His will. Driven to be pleasing to Him. How are we going to be pleasing to Him? It's not necessarily in prayer. It's not in prophecy. It's not in worship and all that. All that is good. But we have to ask ourselves, is my words and my deeds pleasing to Him? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do it better. Find some best around and say, neighbor, do it better. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9. God did not call us to be ordinary. He did not create us to be ordinary. But you are a chosen generation, verse number 9. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, and his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I like these two words, special people. These word, this word special, it means exceptional, exclusive, elite, unique, extraordinary. Look at your neighbor and say, you're extraordinary. God has chosen this generation 
in generations before and generations to come to be extraordinary. Come on, somebody. He's called us to be extraordinary. Notice this. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. He's called us to be extraordinary. We must be driven to be in God's will. And God's will for us is not to live an ordinary, hum ho mediocre lifestyle. God's called us to do better than that. Come on, somebody. God has called us to do better than that. He's called us to live an extraordinary life. In God's eyes, it's not good enough for Christians to live ordinary, normal, usual, regular, common, everyday, average, run-of-the-mill kind of life. We are to live an extraordinary life. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. We turn to a lot of scriptures in this church. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered the heart of man, notice this, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. How many here love God? Oh my goodness. Do you understand our love for God is amazing? Our love for God is what pushes us forward, drives us to please Him. But notice this, there are things that God has prepared for us because we love Him. Then verse number 10 goes on, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Verse number 9, God has already provided a way for us to live an extraordinary life. Oh, come on, somebody. God has already provided a way for us to live an extraordinary life. It's proof here. Things which God has prepared because we love Him. And how many know God is not ordinary? Come on, there's nothing ordinary about God. Everything God does is extraordinary. So if we're going to live His life, it's an extraordinary life. It's an unusual life. It's not a common, normal life. It's an exciting, full of energy, full of life kind of life. It's a life that I, I long to live all the days of my life, and then for eternity I get to live that life. Thank God. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to do it better. Find somebody else and say, I'm going to do it better. Do you understand that God, again, has already provided a way for us to live an extraordinary life? In fact, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, he said that the prophet Jeremiah says this, For I know the thoughts that I think, towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God already has thought of ways to make you better. Come on. God has already thought of different ways to make your life better. How many want to do things better around here? How many are tired of doing things badly, <laughs> making mistakes? All of us at one time or another, it's like, all right, I'm done doing that over and over again. There's got to be something that changes this routine of keep making the same mistake over and over again. Well, God here, he basically said, I know how to get you out of that mess. I already have thought thoughts towards you. I think about how to help you live an extraordinary life to where you can break free from all that stuff. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. You are blessed. Come on. You are blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, you're blessed. Find somebody around and say, Neighbor, you're blessed. God's blessing qualifies us as believers to live an extraordinary life. The blessings of God doesn't make us ordinary. You don't need the blessings of God to be ordinary. You already are. But it's the blessings of God that makes us extraordinary. And we are blessed because the Bible says we are blessed. And we're blessed with every, come on, every spiritual blessing. Not some, not every once in a while. No, every spiritual blessing has been blessed, has, has been given to us, and we're blessed by those very things. That's what calls us to live an extraordinary life. We can do things better. Well, it's just so hard. I just don't know. I just don't. stop thinking that way. Start stop talking like that. God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing to live an extraordinary life. Life shouldn't have you down. You should have life by you, by the very grips of your hands. 
Say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lead my own life by the power of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. He's blessed me. These things that, that I'm facing right now, they will not control my life. I am in control of my destiny. And what controls me is the Holy Ghost. What controls me is the Word of God. What takes control of my life is the blessings of the Lord. He's already thought of ways to bless me, so I just received the blessing. Hallelujah. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3, as His divine power... Woo! His divine power. Somebody say power. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who's called us by glory and virtue. God's power gives us as, the, as a believer the ability to live an extraordinary life. God thinks of ways to help you live extraordinary. God's blessed you so you can live extraordinary. And God's empowered you to live an extraordinary life. Ordinary is not acceptable anymore. Woo, come on, somebody. Ordinary is not acceptable anymore. Come on. Ordinary is not acceptable anymore. Let me give you an example of this. When I graduated from Bible school, we lived on Hamburger Helper. Now, if you like Hamburger Helper, praise God for you. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Because that's all at that time we could afford. When I left Tulsa, Oklahoma to move down here to Texas, I left Hamburger Helper behind. I lived on it. I mean, we had cheeseburger, tuna helper, all these other different kinds. I mean, they got a whole aisle of it in the grocery store with all the hamburger helpers. And I've been delivered from it. But I made the decision when I left Tulsa, I'm not going back to hamburger helper. Amen. It was something in my heart. I made the decision. I'm not going back. You have to make that same decision today. I'm not going back to ordinary. God has thinks thoughts towards me. Thoughts to help me be extraordinary. God's blessed me with every spiritual blessing to cause me to be extraordinary. God's empowered me to be extraordinary. I'm going to think extraordinary. I'm going to talk extraordinary. I'm going to respond like God is an extraordinary God. I'm not going to accept ordinary anymore. Come on, listen to me say, neighbor. You are not ordinary. <laughs> Come on. So it's like, I know that's right. Turn back over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse number 9. Let me show you something here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. In fact, let's jump down to verse number 10. Notice something here. Well, how do we live this extraordinary life? How do we do things better? How can we be driven to do God's will? If God's will is for us to live an extraordinary life, well, how do we do this? God sent His Spirit to reveal this extraordinary life to us. So we say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. He, he reveals an extraordinary life to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 10. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He helps us by revealing this extraordinary life to us. Amen. Now, Jesus gave us the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 14, verse number 26, Jesus said this, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's our helper. He will show you. He will tell you how to live an extraordinary life. There's many times, even in my own life, to where I get to where I'm in this whole home kind of mentality, this mediocre mentality. And as I'm going through the whole process of my day, there's something on the inside of me, which I know is the Holy Ghost, that will sit there and say, you know, Todd, you can do that better. I can look at that present situation and say, well, no, I'm just going to let it slide because I'm so busy and I'm just going to, I'll get back to it. And I've learned in my life that I hardly ever get back to it. But if I would stop right there and do what the Holy Ghost tells me to do, prompts me to do in my spirit, then I do it better. I find out when I do it better, I don't make as many mistakes and I don't have to go back and fix it all the time. If I take the moment to be obedient to what the voice of the Holy Ghost tells me, and I'll make it better. There's many times, in, and I'll just me personally, my closet at times can be pretty messy. I know I'm not talking to anybody else here. But I got shoes size 12, some size 13. How I many know when you got size 12 and 13s, it takes up the floor in the closet? 
And you get to a place to where you're like, you kick them, you're so tired, you kick them off, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to go to bed. And that, I, I get that, I do that sometimes too, but the next morning I'm straightening them up because it, it's like, oh my goodness, this is, just, this is not pleasing to God. He blessed me with these shoes. Now this is me, this is where I get convicted at. He blessed me with these shoes. I've been to countries where kids don't have shoes. But he's blessed me with shoes, I'm going to line them up, or I'm going to put them up where they need. Plus, I'm married. And not only do I have a helper of the Holy Ghost that helps me, but my wife will remind me, pick up your shoes. Come on, wives, how many know what I'm talking about here? But there's always areas in our lives that we can look at that the Holy Spirit's been prompting us, we need to do that better. We need to change that. And, and for, for guys, you know, there's going to be some times that you're, you're communicating with your spouses. There's some things we got to do better at communicating things. And all the wives said, Wives don't want you just to give them a yes, no answer. Thank you for that one amen. They don't want, yes, we're going to, no. They're gonna, they want to know why you feel that way. Why do we, why, why? How many ever, come on, how many husbands? How many times have you heard why? Only like, because I said so, woman. I mean, I said that only a couple times. It don't work. They want to be, well, I had to, in my marriage for all these years, I've always had to work at communicating better to my wife. Why? Because it's not just because I don't want her to gripe and complain. It's because I want to do things in word and deed that's pleasing to my father. Husbands, let me help you here. This went to a marriage seminar like that. But husbands, let me help you here real fast. If you find yourself trying to please your wife, you're never going to be able to get perfection on that. But if you can find yourself pleasing God, it'll automatically start pleasing your wife. In my words and how I do things, if I'm doing it unto the Lord and I'm doing it because I love Him, because I'm pleasing to Him, you're naturally going to have a wife that's going to treat you like a king that you are. Hey, come on, wives, can I get an amen? Now, wives, let me talk to you. Let, 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 let me help you out today. If you're treating your husband like a peasant instead of a king, he will always be a peasant. Start treating your man like a king, and he'll be the king that God created him to be. Well, he don't do this for me, and he don't, he don't tells me he loves me. He don't. Last time he sent roses and, 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 and all that. Stop it. Heap hot coals on him and fix his favorite meal. And all the ladies went, oh, what? <laughs> a way to a man's heart is his belly, y'all. I just, just, anyways, moving right along. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 10. God spent his, sent His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to us to help us live an extraordinary life. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, I'm going to read from the message version. It says this, Through followers of Jesus like yourselves gathered in churches, this extraordinary plan of God is becoming known and talked about even among angels. Not only did God give us the Holy Spirit, to help us to live an extraordinary life. But Paul, when he was writing to the churches at Ephesus, he wanted the church, you and I, to know and experience this extraordinary plan. We are not called to live an ordinary life. We are not called to be normal. We are called to live an extraordinary life. And how is that going to take place? we got to do some things better. Come on, somebody. We've got to do some things better. We've got to be a better husband or a better, I'm not a wife, but you, wives, you've got to be a better wife. We've we got to do things better. Why? Not out of works, not out of duty, but doing it because we love God and we want to be pleasing to Him. That's the whole reason. It's a love relationship. Man, when you love something, you don't want that, that person or that thing to, to, to be pleasing to you. Every Christian has been given the ability to live an extraordinary life. Let me show you this to you. Turn to Romans chapter 6, verse number 4, and I'll begin to close with this. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse number 4. Every Christian has been given the ability to live an extraordinary life. Therefore, verse number 4, therefore, what's it there for? We are buried with him through the baptism in his death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in what? Newness of life. When we were born again, when we accepted Jesus as our personal Savior, we accepted a new life. And let me encourage you, this new life is not an ordinary life. 
This is not a whole home life. It's an extraordinary, above the usual kind of life. It is an abundant life. It's a it's an exciting life. I mean, if you make the decision that I'm going to be believing God, who knows this time next year or the year after you can say, yeah, I went to Israel. I went to Egypt and it was God that provided the way for me to go. It was out of the ordinary. It came extraordinary, but I believed God and here I am standing in front of the pyramids in Egypt. And you say to the God, I, what? How did this? I'm, 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 a, I'm just this guy in Seminole, Texas. And here I am because God is an extraordinary God. I said the same thing whenever my first trip to Egypt, when I went to the pyramids. I'm telling you guys, the, the, natural, the National Geographic doesn't put it in perspective when you stand in front of the first blocks on the bottom of that pyramid in Gaza. That, those blocks are... I can't even describe how big they are. I'm trying to put it in perspective here. The bottom block is like, if you take half this building right here and go all the way over there, and it's even taller than the tallest. That's the first block. And then they build up from there. And so I'm standing at this thing going, I am from Seminole, Texas. And I look around, ain't nobody from Texas. I look around, I don't see any Americans out there. I'm just standing there going, God you are amazing. I just chose to believe you, and here I am. Never would have thought it. Got on a camel, going out through the desert, and, and no telling where I was at. And I'm thinking, I'm riding a camel. This guy from Seminole, Texas, pastor in a church in Seminole, God, you are an extraordinary God. Who would have thunk it? We should never say, who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? My... my <laughs> Who would have thought? Why? Because we just choose to believe God. He's a God of extraordinary. You would think about it. Think about it. Your kids don't have to go through the same stuff that you've gone through if you believe in an extraordinary God. Generations can be cut off. The curses can be cut off of your generations if you believe God's an extraordinary God, and I don't have to live the way my mom and dad lived. I don't have to fall under that same kind of cloud anymore. I can be different. Why? God's called me to live an extraordinary life. My kids can be different. Thank God my kids are, were different than I was when I was going, growing up. Amen. They turned out pretty good. Right, so let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 17. Hallelujah. I like to say this in a very joking way, in a loving way. The Baptists just got into the restaurant, so we got about another 15, 20 minutes for them to get done that we can go. Amen? Let's look at some things here. I'll close with this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you, he made alive. Look, you never say, you're alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God... Hallelujah. But God, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. Made us alive. Well, what does that mean? He gave us an extraordinary life. I said he gave us an extraordinary life. I said he gave us an extraordinary life. You're not normal. Holla. I said, you're not normal. Let that get through your, through your mind for a second. Let it get down in your side of your spirit. God did not create you a new creation in Christ to be normal. God created us to be above the norm. He called us to be extraordinary. Start seeing yourself that way. Start talking that way. Start believing that what I see right now is going to change. Let me say this. Today's excellence is tomorrow's mediocrity. How you live your life right now can change. It needs to change because if you haven't changed, you're just going to get more and more normal, more and more ordinary, more and more falling deeper and deeper away from what God's ultimately called you to do. Today's excellence is tomorrow's mediocrity. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Come on, somebody. Keep pressing on. How fast somebody say, keep pressing on. Come on, how fast somebody say, keep pressing on. Hallelujah. Keep pressing on. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, Josh, could you come up and play the piano for me? Come on, look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, keep pressing on. Find some of us around and say, neighbor, keep pressing on. Hallelujah. How many believe God's got some things planned for us? Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's got some things planned for you. He's already got some plans for you. And they're not normal plans. God does exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ever ask or think. Come on, somebody. God does exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Man, what you're thinking right now is not big enough. Come on, somebody. What you're thinking right now is not big enough. God's bigger. I said God's bigger. He's going he's gonna to bear your mind away in 2019. When you step out and you say, I'm going to live an extraordinary life. The way I lived in 2018 is changing. I'm, I'm doing things better. Get ready for miracles. Get ready for signs and wonders. Get ready. Your life will be forever changed. How many want to see some changes in your life? Good. How many want to see some changes in your life? Go on, stand to your feet today. Go on, let's lift up our hands. And let's thank you. Come on, thank you for that extraordinary life today. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to do it seemingly above all that we ever ask or think. God, you've called us to live the next year ordinary life. <laughs> to not live ordinary anymore. You put a newness in our life. We walk in the newness of life. We've been made alive together as you. We will choose to be ordinary anymore. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. With everybody says, God, eyes closed. Maybe you're here today. I know that, you know, when Pastor Chris asked if there was any visitors or any guests, we didn't have any today. But maybe you just kind of, you've come to our church once or twice, you come occasionally, but you come back, the Lord kind of led you to come to church today. But you know, you're not here by accident. God was pulling on your heart. The Holy Spirit was pulling on your heart to get you to be here today to hear this message. He wants to do something on the inside of you. Maybe you've fallen away from God and you have been living that normal, average, even below average. You've been fussing and fighting and trying to get you know, out of the clouds. You're so lost and you just want to come back to God. You can remember as a young child or even as, as you grew up, the stories of the prodigal son and how he left his father's home and spent all that he had and started living in the world. And you're at that place where I'm tired of living in the world. Part of that lifestyle, I want to come back home. If that's you, I want you just to lift your hands up wherever you're at and say, yeah, I want to come back to Jesus today. Is there anybody here Thank you. Just keep your hand raised up. So I want to come back to Jesus today. Thank you, Lord. This is what I want you to do. I want everybody to do this. Don't raise your hand. Just do this. I want us all to pray this. Say, Heavenly Father, I stand before you today. I need you. I've turned my back on you. I've lived my life the way I wanted to. But today, I'm tired of that life. I'm not going to live that life anymore. I want the extraordinary. The life that Jesus, that you've given me right now, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Take away my past. Extraordinary life begins right now. Right now. Now I'm going to come down here. If there's anybody here, we're going to start doing this more and more. You're like, man, hey, the earlier service you guys are praying in tongues and I, man, I have something to pray. I'm going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If that's you, I'm going to meet you right here. I'm going to pray with you. Then we have a prayer time that's going to take place. I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. So if that's you, everybody says that. ashamed of that. So if that's you, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, once you come down right here, I want to be with you. Just make your way out. Is there anybody today? Just come on down. I'm going to pray with you. Hallelujah. Anybody? Cool. Then everybody here can speak in tongues. Praise the Lord. Just lift up your hands and let's just start doing that right now. Hallelujah. Come on. Church. 
word church that preaches the word and heals the words. These signs shall follow those that believe. In my name, they will speak with good tongues. Follow me, thank you, Lord. 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 Amen. Amen. God's doing some new things in this church. So God's doing some new things in this church. Don't miss the service. This week's in Miss Nathan. She was, uh, she was at Level End today, ministry in an amazing church at uh, Pastor Eddie Joyce's church that did a women's conference and the last ministry this morning. And um, so I believe that she was a blessing to them. Wednesday night, she's going to be teaching. She started with this Wednesday. She's going to be talking about the importance of the believer when it comes to the power of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. So if you'd like more information about that, and um, you want to come and learn more about the power of the Holy Ghost, she's going to be teaching on that. How many know Miss Daphne is a teacher? She can teach in where it's just, it's just real, genuine. And if you haven't um, heard a message on the Holy Ghost or prayed in something in a while, you like to just stir yourself up in that? Get your honey in the church on wisdom. <laughs> and then it's going to be a good time. Amen. Grab somebody by the hand. Let's uh, pray for one another. We'll be dismissed. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We pray for the person on our right. And on the left, we call them blessed coming in, blessed going out. We're the head and not the tail. We are overcomers. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We are people that walk by faith and not by sight. We always triumph through Christ Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over everything that we come in contact with. Whatever we eat this, we believe that the blood of Jesus prevails over anything. What we believe today, that as we leave, we're going to be the light in the darkness. We are transforming lives, changing the world. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. You're just missing a wonderful day. God bless you. We'll see you on Wednesday nights.